Good morning to all my lovely dear students. Welcome back to my class. I shall start another new topic on in grammar with you all, which is phrases and clauses. I think this is a very new term for you all, but don't worry, very soon you will come to know what phrases and clauses are. But before we understand what is a phrase or what is a clause, let us discuss a few important things related to it. Students, first of all, we all need to understand that what is grammar? Grammar in any language is actually the proper way to learn that language. So because we all are learning English, so we are having grammar to learn English correctly. Now, what is a language? It is a means of talking, means of expressing our ideas and how do we do that? We do that by using sentences. So now what is a sentence? A sentence is a group of words. Am I correct? No. Sentence is not only a group of words. Sentence is a group of words which convey a proper meaning. That is a sentence. I simply cannot put words haphazardly here and there and say that it's a sentence. Isn't it? I need to arrange the same words in a proper order and then we get a sentence. Now, sentence definition you all know. So, it's not important for me to write the definition or I have already told you that learning definitions is not important. It's important to understand what you are learning. So, we all know that what are sentences? It is a group of words which gives us a proper meaning. Now, we will learn a few important features of sentence. It's not about learning. You all have learned it. You will revise it. So, sentence earlier you learned had two important parts. What were they? You learn that sentence has a subject and sentence has a predicate. So, these are the two important parts of a sentence, isn't it? Now, let's not concentrate on the definitions on subject and predicate. Let us simplify it. So, what is a subject? Subject is that part of the sentence about which we are talking. So, this is mostly a kind of definition that you get in the book. Now, if I want to simplify, then whatever we talk about is a subject. Right now, what am I talking about? I am talking about sentence. I am talking about subject. So, subject is my topic of discussion. Therefore, subject is the subject itself. That means, Whatever topic we talk about is the subject of the sentence. Right now I am talking about sentence. So sentence is the subject. Secondly, what is a predicate? Whatever we say about the predicate, uh, subject is the predicate of the sentence. So don't concentrate on definition. Just understand that what is a subject? The topic on which we are discussing? Well, when, when we talk, whatever topic we talk about is the subject. And then whatever we say about that subject is the predicate of the sentence. So these are the two parts of a sentence which you have learned in your previous years. Now, the next important thing that you need to understand is that there are three important things without which you cannot construct a sentence. Now, what are they? Those three important things are subject, predicate, and the third thing is called the verb. So, these are the three important things without which we cannot write any sentence or we cannot speak any sentence. Now, 
Next subject, if I don't have a topic, then how will I talk or how will I construct a sentence? Therefore, I need the subject. Now, I have the topic, but I don't know what to say about it. That means I don't have a predicate. Then also I will not be able to talk or I shall not be able to write. Therefore, predicate is important. And what does a verb do? It tells us what verb we do. Is it? There are more functions of the verb, but right now you have only learned that verbs tell us about action. So we will just remain till that much. When I come to your verb chapter later, then you will learn certain new things in verb. But right now you have learned that verbs talk about action. So how will I express what work I am doing if I don't have a verb, isn't it? Therefore, these are the three important things without which we cannot write a sentence. So this is the first introductory revision that we need to do before I come up to the new topic that I want to teach you all which is phrase and clause. Now my dear students, I shall start with the topic phrases and clauses. So we have already learned that sentences have two parts. One is the subject and the other one is the predicate. The new thing that we will learn today is sentence can also be divided again into two parts which are phrases and clauses. Okay. Now see, you can see here on the board I have written in the market. Now you all might be thinking what did man write? What is in the market? Isn't it? It's confusing. You all cannot understand the complete meaning. You all know the meaning of market. You all know the meaning of in. You also know what is the. But even after that, when I just gave these three words together, you don't understand what I'm trying to speak up or what I'm trying to tell you. Therefore, the meaning of this part is incomplete. But if I add up another part to this sentence, now I have added a part to this sentence I saw my friend in the market now what, what happens as soon as I put I saw my friend in the market the meaning of in the market becomes clear to us. Therefore, we saw that in order to understand the part in the market, we always need another part or in the sentence. But if I don't have this part in the market, if I just write here, I saw my friend. Okay, let us omit in the market. You just forget about this part in the market and just see I saw my friend. Do you understand the part or is it still incomplete? No. We all can understand that it means that I have seen my friend. It's not necessary where I have seen but yet I can understand the meaning that this sentence is trying to tell us. It is telling us that I have seen my friend. So now did you see the difference? See, we have two different parts in the sentence. One is, I have, I saw my friend and the other part is in the market. What is the difference between these two parts? When I remove this part from the sentence, still I can understand the meaning of this part. I saw my friend. But if I remove this part, I saw my friend, then I, and I just leave in the market, then I don't understand the meaning of the sentence. Therefore, this is what you will learn. The part of the sentence which can explain itself, which does not need the help of any other part, is called the clause in the sentence. It is called the clause of the sentence. And the part of the sentence which is dependent on another part or which is dependent on the clause is called the phrase. Therefore, see, we got what are the features that we got? Clause is self-dependent. Okay, 
which means it does not need any help does not need help to express itself You can say the clause is independent. But what happened? In case of phrase, we see that phrase is dependent on the clause to understand its meaning. Therefore, we see that. Whenever we write a phrase, we cannot write it on its own. We always need a clause. But I can write a clause, I can simply pick up the clause from the sentence and yet it will have its meaning. It will retain its meaning. Now what does it? I will very easily explain you. So, clause are your parents and phrase are you. Which means that you all, you all children are the children who are not self-dependent. You need your parents for everything. If we remove your, uh, if we take away your parents from you and just leave you alone, you will not be able to do anything, isn't it? That means you are dependent on your parents. So your parents are the clause and you all are the phrase. But see, your parents, they can stay without you. Not emotionally, but at least they can do their work without your help. So they can, they are self-dependent. But you all are dependent on your parents. Similarly, phrase is dependent on clause, but clause is not dependent on phrase to explain itself. Now, the next important thing that you need to understand is if phrase is so unimportant, or if phrase, if we can write a sentence without a phrase, if clause alone can make us understand the meaning of the sentence or express the uh, motive of the sentence, then why do we need a phrase? We need a phrase because it gives us some more information about the clause. So here you see, I saw my friend. Fine, I understand the meaning that yes, I have seen my friend. Somebody comes and tells me that I saw my friend and I understand that that particular person has seen his friend. But when I that say, I saw my friend in the market, then I'm giving an added information that which gives more meaning to the sentence. We get to know further that where did that person see his friend? He has seen him in the market. Just like you all, although you all are dependent on your parents and your parents are not dependent on you, yet without you, your parents are incomplete. You add up meaning in your parents' life, isn't it? Your parents cannot think to live without you. You all are adding happiness to your parents' life. Similarly, what is the phrase doing? It is adding up more meaning to the clause. Therefore, this is the function of a clause and a phrase. Both together make up the whole sentence where if we divide it into two parts, how will you identify which is the phrase and which is the clause in a sentence? You will see that the part of the sentence which you can understand without uh, when you uh, remove a part, other part, then that part is the clause, and that uh, and that part of the sentence which you cannot understand without the other part is the phrase. So this is where we will end up today's class. In my next class, I'll move further with clause and its kind. So thank you, my dear students.